video is video one, drawing one, and lesson one of my Inktober drawing and video series. If you have not viewed the Introduction to Inkscape and Zentangles video, you should do that before watching this, particularly if you are new to Inkscape. Before I start my first drawing, there are a few things I want to explain. As I draw, I am going to use two tools, the rectangle tool and the pen tool. To create a rectangle, I click the rectangle tool to activate it. Then I press my left mouse button and drag. When the rectangle is the size I want, I release the left mouse button. In Inkscape, objects created with the rectangle, ellipse, star, and spiral tools are shapes. Shapes have controls on them that I can use to make adjustments. On a rectangle, I can round the corners by dragging the circular controls. I can change the size of the rectangle by dragging the square controls. To activate the pen tool, I click on it. The pen tool has several modes. In this drawing, I am only going to use two of them. Straight and diagonal and straight. In the straight and diagonal mode, I can only create horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line. To activate the mode, I click the icon. I then click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click to create line. When I finish creating my lines, I press the Enter key. In the straight mode, I can only create horizontal and vertical lines. To activate the mode, I click the icon. I then click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click to create horizontal and vertical lines. When I finish creating my lines, I press the Enter key. In Inkscape, objects created with the pencil, pen, and calligraphy tools are paths. Paths consist of nodes and segments. Nodes are gray, squares, or circles. Segments are the lines that connect nodes. I can change the shape of a path by manipulating the nodes and segments. You can convert a shape to a path, but once converted, it cannot be converted back. You cannot convert a path to a shape. I can use the selector tool to select objects. I just click the selector tool to activate it and then click the object I want to select. Or I can press the left mouse button. While holding down the left mouse button, I can drag and surround the objects I want to select. Then I release the mouse. I can also use the nodes tool to select objects. I just click the tool to activate it. Then I click the object I want to select. Or I press the left mouse button. While holding down the left mouse button, I drag and surround the objects I want to select. Then I release the mouse. The selector tool is a general purpose selection tool, while the nodes tool is used to manipulate nodes. Before I get started with my drawing, I want to provide you with a few more tips. To delete objects, I select them with the selector tool and then I press the delete key. 
To undo an action, I press Ctrl plus Z, or I click the Undo icon. That reminds me, in Inkscape, as with most software products, there are often three ways to execute a command. By using the menu, by clicking an icon, or by pressing a key combination. For example, to copy an object, I can select the object and then click Edit Copy. Notice that to the left of Copy, there is a picture of an icon, and to the right, there is a key combination. As an alternative to using the menu, I can find the icon on the tools bar and click it, or I can execute the key combination. In these videos, I will use either the menu or an icon, only because that will make it easier for you to see what I am doing. In practice, usually, using the key combination is faster. I'm now ready to start my drawing. In this video, I'm going to create a Zentangle using the pattern Baton. As you can see, this pattern consists of a diagonal um, and a vertical and horizontal lines. Usually, I use a grid like this. I would say that like 80% of the time. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to switch to an axonometric grid. And I do that by clicking File, Document Properties to open up my Document Properties dialog box. Then I click the Grids tab, and here's our rectangular grid, I'll click this box, Enabled, to remove the check mark. That'll disable to grid the grid. You can no longer see it. And then I'm going to click the down arrow here and select Axonometric Grid, and then click New. So uh, it's created a new grid, and uh, what I'm going to do is click on this tab to move to that grid. And uh, you can see it's a, this is an axonometric grid with a lot of um, diagonal lines and uh, uh, vertical lines. What I'm going to do is make these grid lines a little bit closer. So I'm going to put three in here. And uh, there we have our grid. So I'm going to use this uh, um, to help me draw my lines. I can now close the Document Properties dialog box. Over here I have my snapping tools. And this button or icon here, it turns snapping on and off. I want snapping on. This icon here uh, allows me to snap to the grid. So, and I'll show you exactly how snapping works in a minute. And uh, this icon here allows me to snap to the page. That's this line along here. So I'm going to turn that on so I can snap to the page uh, as well as the grid. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull out a guide and I'm going to mark off a space oh, about, I don't know, here. I, I want to use a portion of my page that's less than a quarter. It, it doesn't really matter by how much, but it, but I want it to be less than a quarter. Okay, so 
brought, uh, put a guide here. And again, you just click on the ruler and drag, and that'll bring out the guide. Now I can start creating my pattern. I'll click on the pen tool and uh, for straight lines I can uh, choose between uh, this mode and this mode. This one creates straight and diagonal lines. This one only creates straight lines. Um, to be honest with you, when I uh, need to create horizontal and vertical lines, I like to use this one because it makes sure that the lines are perfectly straight. But sometimes I forget and I use this one and then I regret it because when you're creating this pattern, if one of these lines is even slightly crooked, it throws the whole thing off. So forgive me if I forget, but that's what I'm going to try to do. When I need um, diagonal lines, I want to use this one. When I need uh, horizontal or vertical lines, I'm going to try to use this one. This is my zoom tool. And I can click on it to zoom in. And I can see things. Uh, maybe that's in too much. I'll click here and zoom back out again. I, I can see my lines a lot more clearly. So. I'm going to click my pen tool and I'm going to start off with this. Uh, uh, the um, My uh, tool that I can use to create horizontal, vertical, and straight lines. So now I want to snap. I want my line to start directly on the page border and go across to here. And follow this line. I hope you can see it. And it, as you can see, as I move my pen around, It's wanting to snap to the grid. And quite honestly, I don't want to do that. Maybe it'll help if I enlarge this a little bit more. Yeah. So, click the pen tool. Handle to grid line. Oh, uh, there. I don't know if you can see it, but it says, when it says handle to page border, that's what I want. Handle to page border, not handle to grid, grid line. And I can tell you, this is, I, I'm not doing this just because this is important. Handle to page border, and I see that click, and I drag, and then when I see handle to, I, again, I want to hit the page border, not the grid intersection. Uh, this is going to be hard because it looks like that grid intersection is right at the page border. I'm going to hope that that's true and click there and then press enter. So I've got my line. Uh, then I'm going to click here again, handle to page border. Click. Again, it looks like the border and the intersection are at the same place. I really want the page border, not the intersection, but I'll click here again. I guess things will be okay if I consistently on this side hit the intersection. So I'll, I'll click here and press enter. Okay. Uh, then I'll come down here. I'll click again. I'm clicking on the major grid line. That's the darker line. And wait a minute, I don't know. Did I see the border thing? Yeah, page border. And click again. Press enter. Click. 
click again, drag, and hit intersection, click again, press enter. Okay, I'll do that one more time. I'll click here at the page border, come down here, click again at the intersection, and press enter. You might be wondering why I'm so finicky about that. I want, it's, I, I want, and it is really important that these lines, um, end all at the same place. So that's why I'm so finicky about that. And as we go along, you'll see why. So now um, I'm going to click here, this major grid line. This time I'm going to go down and press Enter. Then I'm going to here, uh, click here. I'm trying to, it's saying grid intersection, and, and in this case, it, that's just fine. But I really want to not leave any gaps in the line. So I'm going to click here, come down, handle to grid intersection, click, press enter, click here, handle to grid intersection. I see that. I'll click and press enter. Click again, come down. Handle to grid intersection, click again, press enter, and I'll come here, handle uh, to grid intersection, come down here, handle to grid intersection, click again, press enter. Okay, so, uh, hmm. I can, I'm going to go across here. So there isn't a horizontal line. Oh, I told you I forgot. I will forget sometimes. Yeah, these are vertical lines and I was using this one. I'm going to come over here and use this this time. And I'm going to create horizontal lines and I'm going to try to go through where these lines cross. So I'll start here on this line. I'll click. That's not quite high enough. Maybe I'll start here. Click and drag across uh, to this intersection. Press enter. I'll come here. Click here. And I'll bring this down here to this intersection. Press enter. I'm going to sk skip a crossing. Come down here. Handle to grid intersection. Click. Handle to grid intersection. Click. Press enter. This cross is right here. I'm going to come down here. Click handle to grid intersection. When I see that, I click, come here, and not handle to grid in grid line. Handle to grid intersection. Why am I not getting that? Maybe I'll start here. Handle to grid intersection, and come here. I'll click here. Handle to grid intersection, click, and bring that back here. So I have my basic design. And what I want to do is rotate this around so this edge and this edge are the inner edges. But before I do that, here's something that you should know. What I'll do, I'll do it over here. Uh, um, 
I'll click a line, I'll click and drag, press enter, click and drag, press, press enter, click and drag, press enter. I have three lines. If I want to move all three of these lines at one time, I want them to seem to, let me rephrase this. I have three lines. And to Inkscape, there are three separate lines. I can move them. But I want to move them all at the same time. I can do that by holding down my Shift key and selecting, and as I click each one of them, and then I can drag them all. But for my purposes with this, things can really get mixed up. So what I want to do is group them. And if I group them, then Inkscape thinks of them as one object. And, th and this is a process that, as we create our artwork, we'll use often. So what you want to do in a case like that is you want to uh, um, activate the selector tool, and in this case it's already activated, and then select all of the lines created, and then click Object Group. So now they're not one item, and we can, if you look at that menu item, we can later come back and ungroup them, but uh, we can work with these as if they were one object. Okay. Uh, I want this outer edge here to be my inner edge. So uh, let's see. If w this rotates any object 90 degrees clockwise, so this will rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. So let's see what happens. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise and then 90 degrees clockwise. So there we have it. So my outer edges are now my inner edges. Alrighty, so we have this. And it's facing in the direction we want. So what I want to do is select it. And then I want to duplicate it. Uh, OK, so I'll click the Duplicate button. And uh, when you duplicate in Inkscape, it pre places the duplicate directly on top of the original. So I have two copies here, one sitting on top of the other. I want to flip my copy. And then I want to hold down my control key and drag. So I create a mirror image. Now what I want to do is I'm going to, I have two objects here now, this group and this group. I want to group them into one group. So I'll select them both. And then I'll click, click Object, Group. So now they're one group. And I'm going to duplicate this. So I click the Duplicate button. So it creates a duplicate, and as I said before, places it directly on top of the original. And I want to uh, flip this vertically. I'll, I'll click this button. It will flip objects vertically. And then I want to hold my Control key and drag downward. And holding down the Control key will con prevent me from moving a little to the left or a little to the right, allow me to to drag straight down. Okay, so I want it to meet up. Uh, not, not quite. Um, ah, here's something that you can do. You get this, there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a seam there. This isn't exactly where I want it. I can hold down my Alt key, 
while I press my up arrow key. Wait a minute. I need this selected. I'll hold down my alt key while I press my up arrow key. And I can just nudge this up. I don't want it too far. I just want it to meet. Okay. So, there we have our design. I was... What's going on here? Okay. Ah. And nudge this, uh, nudge this back up. Um, yeah, I want to close these. So, I've got a little gap here. Click. And then I'll just... Click. Drag. Center to close that up. I think I have one over here too. Yeah. I'll just click here, drag down to close that up. Uh, then I want to group all of this. So I select it all. And press object click rather object and then group so that's my basic design but what I want to do is first I'm going to delete these they're distracting me so I selected them and I'm going to press the, the delete key now I want to put a background behind this. So I'll click Layer, Layers. That'll open up my Layers dialog box. And you can think of Layers as a, a stack of transparent sheets that you can see through each sheet to the sheet below. I want to add a layer below this so I can create a background. So I'm going to click this button. It's the create a new layer button. I'm going to name my new layer background. And I'm going to place it below the current layer and click add. So now I have a background layer and my regular layer. What I want to do now is I want to turn the color of these lines, all of them, to white. So I will select this and then I'm going to hold down my shift key and click here on the color white. And my um, pattern disappeared. Mm, that's bad. But what I can do, uh, well, let me explain. The reason it disappeared is because we're working on a white canvas and uh, the pattern is white, so you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is click File, Document Properties, click on the Page tab, and change the background to a checkerboard background. And now we can see our design again. Uh, then I'm going to come down to the background layer. I'm going to click the rectangle tool. I can snap to my page border. So I'm going to come up here and another grid. I really want to be on the page border. So what I can do is hide my grid. So I'll click view page grid that turns the grid off. So, yeah. So I'm going to click on the page border and drag. 
and then come down here and snap to this uh, page corner there. So to change the color of my stroke, which are these lines, I held down my shift key and I clicked on the color white. Now I want to add a black fill. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that my rectangle is selected and then I want to fill that with the color black. Uh -huh. So there I have it. I have my design. I want to center it on my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my design and then I'm going to click object, align and distribute. And then in this section you can use this dialog box here, you can use it to align things. So you have a lot of options on what you can align with. I want to align within the page. So this selection is fine. And this will allow me to align the vertical axis. So I'll click it. And this will allow me to align the uh, horizontal axis. So I'll click it. So now my design is in the middle of my page. I think I want to place a border around my design. I'm going to go to my Layers dialog box. I'll make sure I'm on my on layer one. I'm going to change the name of that to Design. And then I'm going to click the rectangle tool and click up here and drag. By default it's going to click it's going to create a black border. So I'll hold down the shift key and click the color white and that'll turn it white. Then I'll come back here and center that. So it's already selected. So I'll click vertical, horizontal. Uh, there we have it. And uh, there we have our first centangle. I want to export this. Actually, there's something about this. I want to do something else. Um, when you're working with the pen tool in the in this mode or this mode, there's something you can do. You can hold down the control key and click, and that'll create a dot. I want to place some dots in here. This just seems like this gap here just seems too big to me. And I want my dots to be white. So this is already selected. So what I'm going to do is click the color white. That'll turn the dot white. I'll come over here and I'll place it right here. How's that look? Fine. And then I can duplicate this dot. I just click the duplicate button and drag them here. Uh, duplicate again and drag that down here. 
duplicate again and drag that down here. Yeah, I like that better. Let me move this over just a smidgen. So I'm holding down my Alt key and I'm pressing my right arrow key. And that'll move that over just a little bit. Yeah, so there I have it. My first Zentangle. So, what I'm going to do is export this so I can post it on the web. So I click File, Export PNG Image. That opens up the Export dialog box. I want to export the page. And here, so I just make sure that's selected. The width is 600 by 600. That's exactly what I want. Here I have to enter where I want to export it to. So I'm going to click Export As. And uh, I have this um, folder, Inktober Drawings. I'm going to put it there. And uh, I don't know how, I don't know why this SG, SVG is there. I don't want that. I want it, uh, I want that to be the name. And I'll click Save. So um, that's the file name that will be given when it's exported and the directory that it will be exported to. To export it, I actually have to click this button. So I click export and the file is export. I will be able to find it in that folder and post it on the web. That's it. See you tomorrow.